Motives, welcome back to the Behind Your Motive podcast. My name is Yash Akbinar, and today we are joined with the founder of the Focus Group, Belinda Agnew. Belinda is the founder of the Focus Group. I like to think of it as a modern day recruitment agency. She is doing some amazing things and expanding that business even through the times we are living in today. In this amazing episode, we actually get to speak about how she was able to shift and grow that business, so stay tuned for that. But this podcast is based around mindset and truly understanding yourself, so it wouldn't be a behind your motive podcast without diving deep and speaking about that with our guests. So also in this episode, we analyze the power of understanding how you work best and how Belinda used her childhood experiences to her advantage in an odd way. Let's get started. I remember you speaking about your apartment last time we spoke on the phone real quickly. How, how's that been going? Yes. How's, the hun- how's the hunting going? Well, I'm actually still in a hotel. I think as you can tell from the video <laughs> that we're on now, uh, I'm still in the hotel in uh, Rush Carter's Bay, which is next to Double Bay and Darlinghurst. I don't know if you know where that is. It's not far from CBD. It. It's like Eastern <laughs> suburbs, Eastern suburbs of Sydney. Um, it's a beautiful little place. So I've been here since, and I'm going back to Melbourne next week to live in another hotel at the Olsen in South Yarra. Yeah. And then I'm coming back to Sydney to finally settle into an apartment. But apartment hunting has been crazy. Did you know that the most stressful thing in the whole entire world is moving? I wouldn't be surprised. I've moved multiple times. It was very stressful. The stats. I was reading an article about it because I was so stressed. And I was like, this is it. Like, this is the most stressful thing because you're literally getting up and moving your personal things and items to another state and then finding a whole nother home. It's it's a, it's a big thing, you know, and it takes a lot of stress and, and uh, energy away from a person. So yeah, yeah it's and actually the most stressful thing. I, I can, I can relate. And I, can't relate because when when we moved significantly we moved to another country um back when i was oh wow eight years old we moved to the united states for the plans of um moving there forever Mum found someone over there uh, and unfortunately that didn't really work out well and i was too young you know i didn't i remember we did garage sales but i thought it was just fun but looking back now i, I couldn't imagine what Mum was going through ha- having to sell everything literally sell the car lucky we didn't sell the house we put that up for rent instead of selling it um but it was would have been such a stressful time for sure for my mom that's for that's for sure wow yeah especially internationally that's pretty crazy yeah let's let's get started i want to ask you about yourself and uh your origin story and i love really tapping into my guest stories because i feel like it does provide such high value to see where they came from to where they are today. So I'd love for you to wind back the, the tape a bit and, and start from your origin story and where you came from and, and share that with us, please. Oh. So when you say origin story, do you mean from when I started my career or my actual background? I'd love to hear about your background a bit and, and how you started your career, where you, oh. yeah, where you started and where you are today. So I, I mean, like my heritage, my father is Spanish and my mother is Australian. So half Aussie, half Spanish. Uh, my father is actually living in Spain, in Europe. And my mother lives in Australia, in the country. So I actually grew up on a farm with livestock. So like land animals, I had horses as a, as a pet, a miniature pony as a pet. Um, I had a cat, I had a dog, I was on a farm. So growing up, uh, I had chores to do. So every morning you need to wake up at a certain time, it was like 4 a.m., you have to feed the horse, feed the dog, feed the cat, wash the bowls. It was like a routine every morning. 
So I actually had a conversation with someone on a podcast, uh, I think it was about a couple months ago, and we're talking about this and she was like, the most successful people are the people that have routine. So people that come from an army or an army force or people that have lived on farms. Mm. And I was like, I have lived on a farm. (laughs) And she was like, routine. That's what happens with your upbringing because you had such a strict routine, which was so strict because if we didn't feed the animals at a certain time, they wouldn't eat or they wouldn't survive or something would happen. So uh, it was like a chore that I had to do every single morning from 4 a.m. I think till 6 a.m. cleaning and sweeping and mopping and cleaning up the the uh, the manure of the the horses and everything. It was it was crazy. I was doing this as, as a kid, so that was kind of my background. And then at the age of 14 or 15 years old, I moved to the big city, which is Sydney. Mm. Uh, from a little Victorian country of like 30 people in this little town to like Sydney, the biggest city in Australia. Yeah. So it was such a huge transition. So I was a really innocent kid, had no idea about life, uh, never really knew anything about the city. Uh, and then I went to a school, which was Kingsgrove High. I finished my year 10 there. So pre that, I was at a private school of like 40 students. Wow. Uh, it was a Catholic school. So it was very strict. Uh, it was almost like a boarding school. Uh, so we had church every Tuesday masses. We had to pray every morning, pray every afternoon. It was very, very, again, like structure. And then when I moved to the city, I went to a public school, as you know, from a private to a public school, it's like completely different. Yeah. So, you know, I, I got introduced to, you know, smoking and like drugs and like, I didn't even know what these things were. Not that I was taking drugs, but I was just very introduced to all of these things. And I was like, what is this place, you know? Um, and it was just crazy. And kids were like wagging and taking, um, uh, taking days off school and like swearing. And like, that was not me growing up. I was so innocent and I had no idea. So I kind of got caught up in that and I grew up pretty quickly in the city, like 10X. And I ended up leaving school. I uh, didn't finish uh, year 11 and 12. I went into a job and it was actually selling Kirby vacuum cleaners. So I was dock- knocking on uh, consumer houses selling a three and a half thousand dollar Kirby vacuum cleaner. Wow. <laughs> and uh, I was paying, I was getting paid commission cash per sale. Uh, and that was at the age, I think of 17. And I went pretty well in that job. That's when I discovered uh, I was really good at sales. So then I went from sales into a call center role and then a call center role into running my own RTO, which is the back of AIPE in Australia at the time, the Sydney on Sussex Street. And I was running that. We ended up staffing, I think it was like 25, but it was overall around 40 staff. And I was running that at the age of 23 years old. And then from that, I went into focus at the age of four years ago, 30. So what was that? Really bad with math. Yeah, 26. Yeah, 26, 27, something like that. Um, And then I started focus recruitment on the back of AIPE and the RTO because I was recruiting students internationally and domestically into RTOs and universities. The same thing as focus. We recruit executives and put them into companies. So it's a very similar model, very similar structure. uh, And that's when I discovered focus group. And then during COVID happened, I freaked out. I was like, holy shit, what are we going to do? Because everyone was losing jobs. Mm. There was no jobs. There was like several huge recruitment agencies that liquidated throughout the pandemic. So for me, always in business and always doing well, that really put a spanner in the works and I was like do I have to get rid of my staff and go back and find employment like what is actually going to happen so I sat back and kind of reassessed everything and one of my clients at the time he had a meeting with me in Melbourne I think it was like during the pandemic right before COVID happened the start he was like B he's like you know 
during this pandemic and everything, um, I know you can't help us with recruitment, but we we love the brand that you've created at Focus and we love everything you're doing as a brand standpoint. Would you be able to come in to our company and do the same for us? And like, I had a light bulb moment. I was like, this is it. Mm. Like, we've got to pivot into this space. Uh, so he was our first client and we did very well for him. He's still our client. Uh, and he just kind of skyrocketed in return on investment as building a brand online in, in digitizing his brand, his business brand, not his personal brand, business brand. And that's when I kind of realized, holy, this is a thing. This is my thing, you know, uh, and we still have the recruitment agency, but it kind of falls under the group. So we've got focus group, we've got the recruitment agency and digital tech, and then we've got the focus media side, which basically we digitize brands online. We build brand awareness uh, for companies. We create content at scale and we, uh, we create ad spend on top of that. So we're kind of like a digital agency, but in brand B2B. Uh, and now we've won like several clients since, uh, and it's growing faster than the recruitment agency, wow. like triple, triple than what the recruitment agency was. Uh, and we were only six months in. So it's That's just amazing. been one of those roller coasters. Yeah. It's been crazy. And then when it came to Sydney, we won a huge, uh, a huge brand, uh, which I can't mention because we've got an NDA signed. Uh, and there's another brand we won, uh, which is called Higher Pay. Uh, they're actually relaunching into a company called BizPay, and they're a fintech company. So they're one of my major clients. And because of that, uh, we're doing so well. We're growing a team now in Sydney, which I'm hiring actually at the moment. We're hiring like four people. So um, I decided to stay in Sydney and, and grow a team here. And Excellent. that's kind of like, the short story but long story yeah <laughs> yeah and it's come to today and and this is where you are and I, I appreciate you sharing that as well how how was that transition like if you can dive a bit more into that like that would have been a bit scary and it would have been the light bulb moment for you right when you're transitioning yeah. from a recruitment agency which is all you've known to something else Correct. And it was probably a very smart decision. Obviously, it's worked out very well because you saw other it companies has. liquidate around you, but now you've transitioned into that. How how was that experience for you? Uh, at the time, I was like, everybody knows me for recruitment because I built such a strong brand online as recruitment. Like people came to me and came to our team to focus for recruitment, and then going into a different, um, I guess, service it became very complicated. Not that it, not that I don't regret it, but I guess we're still trying to find our brand ourselves because recruitment and branding, it kind of works, but it kind of doesn't. And people get confused. They're like, wait, so you're a recruitment agency and you're also a brand agency. So we're just trying to, I guess, figure out how we can merge and align those two together so people know exactly what we do. Hmm. Um, so I did create the brand called Focus Media and then Focus Group, which is recruitment. Um, and I think I may merge them together and recreate another brand. And I'm not really sure at this stage, but right now we're just going to keep it as Focus Media and Focus Group until we build uh, on top of that. Until you figure something out. Well, I, I yeah. really look forward to seeing that. And I, I hope everything goes to plan. I know, I know you'll settle it. You'll, you'll do fine. Just from, just from knowing you and your mindset, you've got that mindset to, to conquer and adapt. Um, oh, thank you. One thing I want to pull back the curtains on a bit as well is to go back to what you said about consistency and how you were brought up. And mm -hmm. I feel like my, a lot of my audience can relate with that. Um, not a lot of my, I don't know if a lot of my audience are from the farm or have an army background, <laughs> but how do you think you've been able to apply those principles to your life today? How, how important has that been? Because I feel like you, you shared that for a reason. I do feel like that's been a pivotal time where you've been able to utilize those principles today. Yeah, that's actually such a good question. And I'll tell you why, because I'm the opposite now. Right. <laughs> I'm a complete opposite. So I don't wake up before I am. I hate, I'm not a morning person. I hate the morning. I'm a night owl. So completely opposite. Right. Like I would go to bed at like 12 to 3 a.m. Nighttime is my, my ID time, my 
productivity time. Morning, it's just not for me. It hasn't been for me for 10 years. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's just not structure. I do love structure, uh, but I also don't. So it's really interesting because I'm completely opposite. So I don't, so there's, there's a book called The 5 a.m. Club. I don't know if you've read it. A lot of people do read this book and I actually haven't read it, but I always hear about it. And a few of my surroundings, and we talk about this a lot, they wake up at a certain time at 5 a.m. and they go to the gym and they've got a structure and they've got like a consistent thing happening. I'm just not about that life. I cannot wake up at 5 a.m. I do not work well. I actually tried it for two weeks and I was so behind in work and I was so lethargic. I was so tired. I wasn't myself. And what I'm trying to say is don't do what other people are doing because you think that that is the right way. The right way is what works for you. Mm -hmm. Figure out what works for you and how you are your best version within that, whatever you're doing, your business or or your career or your schooling or whatever it is that you're doing, whatever you're good at, just stick to that. Don't try and change or reinvent the wheel because it doesn't need to be. You know, a lot of people are looking up to all these mentors and, and uh, you know, billionaires and millionaires and they're like, oh, he wakes up at 5 a.m. and he does this at night and he does, he eats this certain food and he, he trains at this certain gym and he does this certain thing. It's like that works for him, but it doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. So I guess what I'm trying to say is my advice is don't do what other people are doing because what they're doing works for them it's not going to work for you. You need to find, figure out what that is and just keep sticking to that. So for me at the time when I was young, that worked for me. You know, mindset wise growing up, I, I learned a ton. I learned so much of structure and what needs to be put in place because I do have a lot of structure in my business. Will, my PA, he's on top of everything and he has he is. structure for me in the business. Yeah, He's just like my, I don't know what I would do without him. So he's my structure because that's what he's good at. I'm not good at that. I just show up and do what I need to do. And that's how I found uh, my, I guess, my place uh, to where I need to be. So, yeah, it's it's a funny question because I'm co- completely opposite to that. <laughs> that's interesting. That is really interesting. And I feel like even though you are opposite for like the timing and everything like that, I do still think you did take on those principles and maybe just apply them to other areas of your life. You know, maybe like right. the complete opposite to the nighttime aspect of it. Do you, do you have much of a structure in that way? Not really. I, I go off based on how I feel. And I know you shouldn't put your emotions into business and, and things like that, but it works for me because if I feel a certain way or if I feel like I am in a good mood or or I'm in a good mindset to, to be able to be productive, productive with that project or with whatever I'm trying to do I'll get it done tenfold but if I'm not in the right mindset or if I don't feel like I want to do it and I'm forcing myself to do something I don't want to do that's when it goes to shit Mm. so I don't necessarily have a structure where I don't like to do things I don't want to do that makes sense yeah I think people go into business and for, for reasons to be free and I like to do things with who I want to do it with, when I want to do it, not the other way around. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't like to put structure in place because if I feel like I don't want to do it, then it's going to end up being a chore. So I'd rather do things that don't feel like a chore because yeah, that way I'll keep loving what I'm doing. Definitely. Yeah, I don't want and to resent. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. It's literally just about understanding yourself as well, isn't it? Um, and that goes back to your last point about not waking up at that 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. and doing yes. doing the opposite and just really listening to your body. Um, I definitely agree with that. How, how have you been able to delegate as well? I feel like obviously you've got, a, you've got your own business and your own company and you're working on different projects and not, maybe not everyone can relate to that. So if we could like bring that down one notch maybe to the people that are starting out, how... How could you? How could they utilize delegation in different areas of their life to 
to make them more productive and useful and really looking at their strengths and focusing on that and then maybe delegating their weaknesses kind of like you have with your structure. Oh my God, that is my biggest strength. I'm the best delegator. Like I know how to delegate well. So like I said, I all I do is I wake up, I get a call from Will and he's like, B, this is your morning. This is what you're doing at 9 a.m. This is what's happening at 10. And he basically goes through my whole day of what's going on. And in between that, he's like, remember that podcast with Yash, you have to mention ABC. And I was like, oh, yes, that's right. You know, because he's very good at that. And then I'll have a chat with probably my other team members about what's going on in content world or recruitment world. But uh, what I'm trying to say is I, I've delegated the things that I'm not good at and I stick to what I am good at and that has grown my business more than I would ever think before I wasn't doing that I was wearing every single hat Mm. in the business and doing every single thing and I was keeping at plateau I wasn't growing and I was sometimes decreasing because I was just doing so much and I wasn't focusing on the right things and the things that I was good at so my suggestion is figure out what you're good at what, you know, for me, it's marketing, brand, partnerships, and I guess face forward sales. Whereas the admin, the operations of the business, the, uh, the, the, the transactional stuff of the business, that is just not my thing. So I stay away from that and I push that onto the team. So, yeah, so delegate in a way where you know, you need to know what you're good at first before you push tasks on. Yeah. And if we could explore how you used to feel when you were wearing all those hats, did you feel a lot of overwhelm? And was that the reason why you looked more into delegation? Of course. Yeah. I was super overwhelmed, super highly stressed. I was super unhealthy. Um, I wasn't taking care of my body, my health, my my mind. Everything was pretty much effed um, at that point. And you know, a lot of people can go into depression. A lot of people can uh, become lonely. And a lot of that period of time, people not fail, but they're kind of like, this is not for me. So I'm just going to go back into employment. And that's why they always say, you know, uh, it's one out of 10 businesses that always survive. Uh, One out of 10 that start because of those reasons, because when you start a business, the, the business owner or the entrepreneur or whatever, they're just trying to do so much in, in such little time uh, and they need to know how to delegate well. The entrepreneur is there to create the ideas and to innovate and to create an actual business uh, within their niche, whereas the operator is there to operate the business. And the CTO is there to do the finance and make sure that everything's on budget and on point. So you need to have these people in the business to be able to do very well. And in the mix of that, a lot of people talk about mentors and all this stuff. I don't really have mentors. I do have advisors though. And I would always strongly suggest, especially in your first year, if you can get advisors to come on board, like it's called corporatization, corporatize your business. If you can get two to three advisors that are good in that market, get them on board and just go to them every single month about what you're doing as an overall business, because there's, there's things that they would know to correct, or I guess 10 X your business uh, at that point. So yeah, advisors is strongly suggested. Yeah. And I appreciate you going into detail a bit and I'd love to ask you just a personal question as well, um, which I think can add a lot of value as well. I've got, a few projects lined up at the moment um, Mm -hmm. and it's seeming a bit overwhelming for me as well. I feel Mm -hmm. like I am wearing all those hats and I am trying to, it's really at the beginning stages. I'm nowhere near where your stage is at the moment, of course, but like, how do you think I could go about maybe finding someone to assist in a certain area or delegating a few tasks, you know, and I definitely will take your advice on, understanding what my strengths are i believe if we're speaking about content and, and, the, and the podcast and everything like that my strength is definitely speaking and actually getting to build that relationship with people 
not so much maybe the editing and the behind the scenes work of like the video creation and everything like that. What would you suggest to be able to like, to make that process a bit easier for me? Just find a video editor or find somebody that has that strength. Uh, if you're asking how to find them, there's a uh, Fiverr. You can get uh, freelancers as well. If you're not, if you don't have the budget to, to hire full time internally, you can go on Fiverr. Uh, there's Upwork.com as well, and you can create a job ad, put your budget in, and find right. somebody to basically delegate that. If you do have budget and you do have capital as a company to hire somebody full time, uh, then I would suggest going on LinkedIn. Seek indeed are not great. Don't. I wouldn't bother advertising a job there. I would advertise on LinkedIn and I would go into LinkedIn networks and asking people like, do you know anyone that has a video editor background and motion graphic background or whatever it is that you're looking for at that time uh, and reaching out to networks and asking around, uh, even doing a video saying that you're looking for somebody. LinkedIn works very well when you're looking for, for talent. Right. I'll actually have to look into that. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. One last, one last question. Where can people find you? I know we're easing up on the time now. Where can people find you to connect with you? I have so many other questions, but we didn't get enough time to go through them all. Uh, that's that's okay. okay. I know you have your podcast that's been recently launched. Um, and I'd love yes. for you guys to check that out. You guys that are listening now. Um, yeah. yeah. Link all them and I'll put them all in the show notes down below. Yeah, so the podcast is Wake Up With Focus and you can just literally type it in, Wake Up With Focus. Um, and we're on Spotify, Apple Pod and Google. Uh, if you want to connect with me directly, just jump on my LinkedIn. I'm always on LinkedIn and Instagram. So my LinkedIn is just Belinda Agnew, A-G-N-E-W. And my Instagram is Belinda Agnew Original. You just come check me out, DM me. Um, and if you want direct access, is it, is there anything that you want to pitch me? If you want to come in and uh, work with us or, or collaborate with us, you can just email Will, which is W I L L at focus.com.au and focus is with a double C. And by the way, just to kind of push in there, I am looking for four people at the moment with Focus Media, preferably based in Sydney. So if you know anyone or if you're interested, uh, please holler at us as well. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds so good. Thank you so much, Belinda. Uh, make thank sure to go so much, check yeah. out those links down below. Um, again, thank you so much. I hope you get well soon and good luck with everything. Yeah. Thanks, Yash. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.